Welcome to this installment of Thank You for Your Service. My name is Tom Heiser and I will be your host. Today we will be talking with Joe Breyer, who was with the Army Air Corps during World War II. Joe, thank you for your service. Okay, being a World War II veteran, how did you feel about Japan and the war in Europe when you <coughs> were younger? Really, <coughs> home on the farm, <coughs> We didn't have any radio or nothing. We didn't really didn't know anything about it. <clears throat> so it, it wasn't, <clears throat> it really doesn't, didn't come to mind. We never had a radio or anything on the farm. Okay. So it, <clears throat> it, it didn't, I don't think it bothered me that much. So do you remember the day that Pearl Harbor was attack, attacked? How did you guys find out about it if you didn't have a radio? <clears throat> Well, I had Watkins Brown, <clears throat> and luck was I was, on, I was at one of the customers on the Watkins Brown, and it came on their radio. That's where I found found out about it. it was in, out in the country. Okay. One of the customers on my route. So they always talk about history. And there's a famous part or point in history. You remember where you were, and you know exactly where you were when you heard it. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> On the on the farm. Okay, where were you? Where <coughs> were you living? Where did you grow up? In west of Marshfield, on a farm, eighty acre farm with <coughs> nine of us kids. Okay. And <coughs> we um, all got along good. Walked to school there, <coughs> mile and a half every day for eight eight years, and so that's where I got my eighth grade education on the. The dairy farm. Okay. What's interesting, <clears throat> you and I have spoken a couple times prior to today, and what amazes me is you are 99 years old. No. Your next birthday is? February 19, 19. So you'll be 100 years old? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. February 19. So did you enlist or were you drafted? <clears throat> I enlisted because I would have been drafted but by <clears throat> enlisting, I could pick what I wanted. I didn't feel like I wanted to go digging foxholes and shooting people. <clears throat> and being in the Air Corps, doing little <clears throat> work with mechanical work, that's more my line of work, and I enjoyed. So it, it was better to en enlist and stay out of the regular Army. So you went in the Army Air Corps? Army Air Corps, yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> um, what, how old were you when you went in? 20, well, really 23. 23 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were actually one of the older people that went in because so many 17, 18, 19 year olds. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> then I was married in 41 and met my wife in 1938. Okay. Um, so you were married when you went into service? No. Oh, you were not, okay. Mm -hmm. So you went in in what year? <clears throat> in 41, uh, 42. Okay. So in, you lived up by Marshfield and you went into service? Oh, oh yeah, I was married when I went in service. Okay. <clears throat> That's right, I forgot about that. Okay. And <clears throat> But um, the reason, if I, Went, <clears throat> uh, would have been, if, uh, <clears throat> how the heck did that work again? If <clears throat> I wouldn't have gotten married, uh, I w would have had to go and just been drafted. <clears throat> but by uh, being married, I stayed out one more year. Otherwise, I'd have been drafted earlier. Okay. But, so you <clears throat> chose the Army Air Corps so that you didn't, Go in the infantry for the, with the army. You wanted to go into something that you were familiar with. In the That's airport. right. Okay. Do you remember where you went to basic training for your military? <clears throat> Hondo, Texas. So took a train to Hondo, Texas. Yeah. A little different than Marshfield, Wisconsin. Well, yeah, that's way down. <clears throat> that's forty miles west of San Antonio. So you get down there and you do basic training. 
pretty rough? No. <clears throat> really, in the Air Corps, it was pretty easy. We didn't have all that basic learning how to shoot and dig holes and uh, <clears throat> very, we've done very little marching. <clears throat> um, and it, it, it got away from quite a bit of um, stuff that you would have gotten into in a regular army. Did anybody go enlist with you or did you go by yourself? I went by myself. Okay. So being raised on a farm with nine total kids, basic training must have been pretty easy then. You were yes, it really <laughs> was. <clears throat> okay. What did you think it would be like for you after you joined? What did you think the military would be like? R really? I was used to a little rougher life, hard work, and <clears throat> um, I worked in a lumber camp and I was c accustomed to living in a, with other people, so it really didn't bother me. And you were with all these other boys in the same predicament, so <clears throat> it, it, it really didn't bother me to whatever was going to happen. So you're down in Texas. What type of a, <clears throat> me, what type of a job did you have? Uh, <clears throat> down there? I worked on, uh, um, <clears throat> got in, in line with airplanes, and <clears throat> the job that I'm taking care of um, at, it was a <clears throat> um, little two engine airplane, and we trained navigators. <clears throat> and all uh, just had a just service airplane, uh, those small airplanes. So it wasn't much work at all down there. And um, it's, that was a small plane, but I didn't we didn't stay there very long. I got I got shipped out of there and went, went to school. Okay, so where did you go after Texas? How was that? Where did you go after your basic training in Texas? <clears throat> went to uh, aircraft school in Wichita Falls, Texas. That's where I went on B-26s. Okay, and what training? What, uh, what training did you have when you, before you got to the B-26s? What type of school did you go to? I think you mentioned like hydraulic school or something like no, that? No, no. <clears throat> I didn't know nothing about that. Okay. No, no this, uh, but why I w you went there, how they, everybody worked on the B-26 there and you had instrument guys, hydraulic guys, engine guys, and you really learned how to take care of a B-26. <clears throat> Evidently, they had me pegged to go to <clears throat> uh, flying where they flew B-26s, and that was to Dodge City, Kansas. Okay. So that's where I got, it was a good training on, on B-26. So what did you do in, when you were in Dodge City, Kansas? What were you doing there? Just <coughs> servicing airplanes, okay. <coughs> taking care of uh, there. We our B twenty six was used for training pilots to go f fly overseas <coughs> to share to ferry planes overseas. <coughs> so. Um, my job was every uh, airplane requires service every 25 hours, <clears throat> every 50 hours, and 100 hours. So they came into the hangar, <clears throat> and we had to go through the, and give them those <clears throat> those inspections. So uh, for hydraulic leaks, and so I, I worked on hydraulics, and the other guys worked on <clears throat> other parts of the engine and whatnot. So. So, being an Army guy, I'm not familiar with a B-26. Can you explain to me what a B-26 is? Is that a bomber? Is that a fighter? How many engines? Oh, it's, <clears throat> it's bomber. <clears throat> it had two <clears throat> um, places for bombs in there. It had really dependent on the engines to fly. <clears throat> Didn't have too much wingspan. It had two R-2800 engines. 2,000 horsepower engines. <clears throat> and the props were 14 foot long, 
and they, they, they really depended on those engines. I would say, so how many engines were on the plane? You Two. Said? And there how many cylinder engines were those? 18. 18 cylinder engines. 2,000 horsepower. So pretty powerful. Yep. <clears throat> uh, you enjoy working on those in, in Dodge City? Really? <clears throat> yeah, that's right up my alley. Uh, and <clears throat> I was considered pretty good at it. <clears throat> And after a while, they um, took me off of uh, there. I went into where they, where they flew the planes and tra <clears throat> trained the guys that worked on the planes there. And so all I did was showed how, <clears throat> to, uh, looked, see what they had to do, and check it after it was done, see that it was okay. I didn't have to work it on it myself. I just had to see that it was done. <clears throat> but when I was pretty good at it, uh, to change some of those hydraulic cylinder or valves, <clears throat> they were in the pedestal. <clears throat> and at first it took pretty close two hours to make, change one. I bent the tools and everything to fit. I could do it in one half hour. Wow. And it, you know, it, it, they appreciated my work down there. And I made my own test stand to test the cylinders. <clears throat> And ordinarily, they sent the <clears throat> cylinder that leaked to be redone. <clears throat> but uh, they f <clears throat> I was able to get the seals and everything <clears throat> and overhaul all the cylinders myself. So you said you had to make sure these guys, the other guys were doing their job right, so you were actually a supervisor of that. That's right, yeah. That's all they had to do, yeah, at, at the end. So quite interesting work down there. It was. Okay, so you're in Dodge City, Kansas. Then where did you go in your military service? <clears throat> it was quite a su <clears throat> surprise. You didn't get, we thought it was going to go overseas. <clears throat> they took all our clothes away <clears throat> and um, flew to Manchester, New Hampshire. We was there for a week and nobody showed up. Finally, one guy, a sergeant, came up and said, <clears throat> uh, you guys from Dodge City? Yep. Yeah. When are we going overseas? You ain't going nowhere. So I applied for a furlough and went home <clears throat> on a furlough. Okay. And went there and then it took my wife long back to Manchester. So I stayed over in Manchester then for... So how long, how long were you in Manchester? <clears throat> that was about, uh, <clears throat> about two years. And you were still no, working on uh, hydraulics? Yeah. yeah. On the B-26? <clears throat> well, there, no, wait a minute. Uh, I, no, no. <clears throat> I wasn't, <clears throat> <clears throat> no, I w wasn't there very long. Okay. Uh, no. Um, from there, they flew me to Labrador. And up to Labrador, they put me on B-17s. I was crew chief on the B-17. Okay. It was kind of crazy, after all. <clears throat> a B-17, all that had was hydraulic brakes, and I was trained on hydraulics. <laughs> so what year was that that you went to Labrador? Do you remember? Well, that would have been in... 1944. Okay. And your wife is in Manchester? Yeah. No. So you're up in <clears throat> Labrador, and you spent about how long there, you said? Not too long. Then the war is over. Okay. <clears throat> so the war is over, and pretty happy. I would assume you were pretty happy the war is over. Yeah. <clears throat> so what was your job in Labrador? Just working on those hydraulic brakes, or, you, or were you still training? There was a... <clears throat> just uh, see when the plane come. We, <clears throat> our, we worked on uh, um, <clears throat> navigation. <clears throat> no, uh, no. Uh, the, the, our, the plane was on weather reconnaissance. There, <clears throat> we flew from Labrador to the Azores, back Bermuda, radioing the. Uh, uh, weather to the planes. 
flew those hurricanes and stuff like that. <clears throat> That's, uh, but I didn't, I didn't fly on those trips, so I just, the plane was gone for a week. I didn't have nothing to do up there. Just wait till the plane come back and give it the 100 hour, 20, 50 hour service. And then taxi it around, see that everything worked. So that's quite interesting. There was a lot going on back in these states as well as what was going on in Europe and Japan as well. Right. In the Pacific. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> yeah, there was nothing to do during the... <clears throat> so there's <clears throat> three of us boys we <clears throat> up there. The barracks were still... It's a good thing you didn't have to stay all winter. We got out of there and... Because <clears throat> the old barracks we still had to feed them with coal, <clears throat> and uh, but we, we was right by the Hamilton River, and we went down by the river, and there was a boat there that was kind of half full of water. <clears throat> so we went back to the camp and see if, said, Kid, what about that boat there? Oh, the hell, it's there, just do it. Run. So we pulled it out of the water, got it running, <laughs> Went running around Hamilton River with the old boat. <laughs> well, with all the mechanics, you guys were able to fix it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, do you have any friends when you were up there in Labrador that you hung around with quite a bit? No, just, <clears throat> uh-uh, never, never that, no, never nothing special. Okay. You, you always had, well, <laughs> friends that go out for a beer or something <laughs> like that. <clears throat> so, did you like Labrador as a country or well, an area? Well, there was absolutely nothing there. There was no place to go. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty forsaken country. Yeah. It was just a landing base that's for planes. And okay, so um, <clears throat> do you receive any medals or awards or? <clears throat> I got not medal to awards, but I did get to be buck sergeant. You did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were a supervisor and in charge of a group of men then? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you're in Labrador. What was everyday life like up for, for you? Because you mentioned earlier when the plane is gone, you didn't have a whole lot to do. No, nothing. So what do you do in Labrador? For? <clears throat> Play cards. <clears throat> Went working on a, out in a boat there, went swimming, and just more or less tried to kill time with the boys, because there was no other place to go. It was, it was not, nothing, like a, no way to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you write a lot of <clears throat> letters back and forth to your wife? That, yeah, that's about all I did, because <clears throat> did, that, did that. I never was very much of a corresponder. <laughs> So you mentioned the barracks were kind of cold in the winter time. Did you have tents, or were you in bar barracks up there? Up there. Oh, <clears throat> it was barracks, <clears throat> but yeah, they. Uh, <clears throat> it would uh, well. I never was there in the winter. See, I got out of there in the October. Okay. I was lucky there, because <laughs> I would I would have been scared of winter up there. Okay. Um, you ever have an opportunity to go to a USO show over there or anything like that? Or I don't recall much of anything there, but in Dodge City there I went to USO show. Yeah. Okay. Who do you remember seeing at those shows, if you remember anybody at all? No, I don't remember oh, okay. about that. I understand. Um, you said you were married before you went in. You brought your wife to New Hampshire. Did she like New Hampshire? Yeah, she, well, <clears throat> yeah. She... <clears throat> yeah, she got a job uh, working, making um, <clears throat> uh, vests for uh, of some kind. So we worked there, and and, <clears throat> and uh, we and another. We met some other ones. We got to play in some cards. That's what all. Were you able to come back and see her at all while you were up in Labrador? Did you take oh, any Oh, no, I never had it. I wasn't there long enough for that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you got out in October. You remember 
the end of the war, pretty happy? Yeah, well, <clears throat> that was, at that time, um, I was up in Labrador, <clears throat> and she was there by herself. <clears throat> we didn't, didn't know quite the way it worked out. It worked out pretty good. <clears throat> My, uh, her brother was in the Navy, <clears throat> and they, <clears throat> towards last, and he didn't have to finish that school, so they, he was discharged. Instead of being discharged <clears throat> at home, he's discharged in Manchester. He was going to come to Manchester then to drive my wife home because she didn't care to drive. <clears throat> so right at that time, the war was over. So then I stayed, <clears throat> they stayed in my place in Labrador, in Manchester for about an extra week or so till I got back out of Labrador to Manchester. Then the three of us came home together. Okay, you mentioned your wife's brother was in the Navy. Any other, other people in your family that went in the military other than you? Really not. My <clears throat> my brother went in the same, but he had a real bad um, <clears throat> sinus infection. He, he wasn't accepted in the army, so no, huh? Not not too much. So well, the yeah, there were some neighbors in our from our church and stuff that, uh, you know, but they they were in the regular army. And I didn't meet them there. Okay. In your service, in Air Corps. So of the nine children, you're the only one that went into the military? Yeah. Okay. Nine children, how many girls, how many boys? <clears throat> Six girls and three boys. Large families to run the farm? Yep. Okay. I was number five. Mary, Annie, Rosie, Johnny, Josie. Okay. <laughs> um, so now your time is up in service. You're back with your wife and your brother-in-law. <clears throat> so you drive back home. When you get home, then what did you do after your time was up? <clears throat> well, I thought I was going to farm, but Dad didn't. <clears throat> we didn't get, you know, couldn't get lined up on that. <clears throat> so uh, then I bought a tavern. In went in a tavern Arthur? business up at Loyal. Okay. What was the name of the tavern? <clears throat> Bird, bar, and grill. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is the building still standing? It was a, an old cheese factory. Okay. It wasn't too much of a, <clears throat> it, now it's burnt down, but at, at that time, um, but I lived at Loyal, at Watkins, all that part of the country. It worked out real good. People knew me, and I knew them, and they, <clears throat> I got along good on the Watkins, so my business was pretty darn good. Okay. So you're doing the bar and Watkins at the same time, or just? No, no, no. I was out of the Watkins. Okay. I got out of the Watkins when I went into service. Okay. <clears throat> so you're running the bar and grill. Your wife was running the grill, and you're running the bar. Well, <clears throat> we <clears throat> went into um, food after a while, and was, <clears throat> yeah, I had to go out to the farms to do the butchering, and I. <clears throat> We served fish fries, 75 cents, half a chicken for a dollar and a half, beer was a nickel, a glass, mm. <laughs> and bottle was 20 cents, and made money. <clears throat> okay, uh, getting back a little bit, you said you got married before you went in service. On a, <clears throat> The reason I got married, that kept me out of the service one more year. Okay. Tell us about how you met your wife. Oh. <laughs> well, that <clears throat> happened in 1938 <clears throat> when I worked in a canning factory at Pittsville. <clears throat> and one <clears throat> when I, was, I worked in a, in a canning factory there, I put out in boxes put the cans in the boxes for shipping, and my wife worked in the office. 
So when she came out of the office, I had a chance to talk to her. Well, wait, I got ahead of myself there. <clears throat> uh, the boxes came on a pallet, and they had to be unfolded and put on a jig and glued. So the glue barrel was up by the office. When the wife came out of the office with a dustpan, I had a chance to talk to her, and that's where I made a date with her. That's where I got stuck with her, up at the glue barrel. That's an interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> so you're in Pittsville, and you met your girlfriend, fiance, and then she became your wife. <clears throat> How many years were you married? <clears throat> oh, uh, three weeks lacking, 70. 70 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, any children? Two. <clears throat> yeah, well, one really was born <clears throat> pretty right after we got married. And that when uh, my wife, when I went in service, she stayed with my brother-in-law had a, rented a place upstairs <clears throat> and then then so then the, that took care of that but <clears throat> then the second one was married 19 years later okay so they're 19 years apart a boy and a girl very nice okay so you're running this bar up in loyal what did you do after the bar <clears throat> Well, there, <clears throat> I really you know, sold the bar. <clears throat> I really intended to go in GI school on aircraft training, repair. <clears throat> I had a brother-in-law that had a welding and machine shop at the Wisconsin Rapids. Who was that? What, what was the name of the business? <clears throat> that it was... Uh, um, rap, let's see, rapid welding machine shop. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, when I got out, he was pretty busy. He asked if I would work with him and help him until he got caught up. So I thought to myself, if I'm going to work there, I might as well know something about it. So I <clears throat> took a GI training with for welding and machine shop with Lee with Lee and Lee was a trainer for the government at that time <clears throat> so but <clears throat> so then I got he got paid to train me and I, I got some extra training that way <clears throat> but then uh, that didn't work out very I didn't think that was a very good business for the two of us then I talked him into implement business. <clears throat> and it was pretty easy to talk to. <clears throat> At that time, the Garber had a junkyard here, and he'd done quite a bit of welding for Garber. And, and Garber told him, he told him, Wilbert, you're not going to get no place if you don't sell something. So it was pretty easy for me to talk him into trying to get a dealership. What was your brother's name, brother-in-law's name? Wilbert Brockman. Okay. And, <clears throat> yeah, wonderful partner. He couldn't sell peanuts at a zoo, as far as that, but he could do anything, welding, machine shop, <clears throat> had a good personality, <clears throat> and talk about cooperation. I was doing all of the selling, and farmers work seven days a week, <clears throat> so you've got to be available seven days a week. And it didn't make any difference if it was four o'clock in the morning, Sunday, <clears throat> or when. If I needed a promise something, he never said, you should, you should know better than to do that. When we went in business, he said, Joe, <clears throat> We're in this together. Whatever happens, it isn't your problem. It's our problem. And that's the type of person he was. <clears throat> We're both going to be buried in 
Altdorf next to one another. <laughs> so what type of implements were you selling at John that time? John Deere. That is quite an experience training people away from this putt-putt. So you're selling tractors and all sorts of things. You know, you know, <clears throat> you know hay balers and <clears throat> plows and planters and everything, you know. And so now you're in the implement business. How long did you stay in the implement business? 20 years, <clears throat> then we turned it over to the younger guys and then they, after 20 years, they lost it. They okay. didn't work quite like as hard as we did. So what did you do after that? Work, <clears throat> after that, well, when I got out of business, then I worked for them for 20 years. Mm -hmm. and my wife worked in the parts. <clears throat> and since then, I've been retired. Okay. So you're retired and you stayed in Wisconsin Rapids. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, So your training in the military with the mechanics and things like that, do you think that that kind of helped you with your jobs in later life? Really not. <clears throat> no, because uh, <clears throat> when I went into, uh, <clears throat> and it didn't help nothing in the tavern business, <clears throat> and in the John Deere business, I done all of the selling. So, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> It didn't. It didn't help. N nothing there. And, and the only thing that it did help, I <clears throat> military helped. I did get a. I do, I'm, on a I'm on a 30 percent pension, so I get a $400 a month pension. Okay. Um, mm. Do you belong to any veterans organizations at all? Oh, both of them, v VA and. Mm -hmm. Okay, you belong to VFW then, or? Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, I notice you're wearing your honor flight shirt. You said that was quite an experience for you. Yes. <clears throat> um, on the honor flight, <clears throat> I always remember the first place we landed, <clears throat> when we landed, the first person that came, to, I met it out of the plane was my cousin, <clears throat> and she, she lived in New Jersey there, so not too far away from there. <clears throat> she brought three or four dozen cookies, <clears throat> chocolate chip cookies. And so I was pretty popular on the bus. <laughs> yeah, so then <clears throat> she followed all the way, she had a, must have had a uh, record of where we're gonna stop. She followed me to, Every one of those places, <clears throat> so, uh, she, she and my uh, guardian they followed uh, were with me all the while. It was really nice. <clears throat> and then when we got back to uh, on the, uh, uh, back to home, there was about three hundred people waiting to. Uh, Welcome us. You know, pretty, pretty interesting. So, did you like touring Washington D.C.? Mm -hmm. Did you like seeing all the memorials in Washington? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And boy, oh boy, every place you stopped, all the people that were there to greet you, it was touching. <clears throat> How they? <clears throat> it's such a it's a good feeling that people were so good about feeling what you did in the service. <clears throat> but after all, <clears throat> that <clears throat> live here in, at the Rapids, they were treated, but you stop to think about it. Look at <clears throat> all the, what, what would the, uh, what would we accomplish in the service if it wasn't for the good people uh, that furnished us the food <clears throat> and put all the overtime in making the equipment so we had something to fight with? 
we had we, we had darn good people right back home too. Mm -hmm. And without out them, we couldn't have done nothing. These <coughs> these people uh, were um, older; they were maybe re retired. They took on jobs that because all the young guys were in the service. There had to be somebody to build these airplanes and whatnot. And look at all the women. They took men's jobs in order to keep us going. So it, it, it's, it's a two-way street. It's, the GI has done their part, but without the good people at home, we'd, we'd been helpless, right? Exactly. So Rosie the Riveter was very, very important. That's right. And so <clears throat> the veterans better do some <laughs> do some thinking too. <laughs> so like you say, they're back here working. Now you said your wife was working when she was in New Hampshire, correct? She was working. Yeah. Was that a military building, job that she was doing? Building uh, life vests. Okay. There. Yeah. So these were being used by the service people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was part of the war effort also. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Any anything else that you want to talk about at all, um, Joe? On this, I think we covered pretty much. Uh, have you had have you had any more questions? Well, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Well, I just what I was going to say is that <clears throat> with my trip on the shirt. And then to be thankful for what the people did for it. that that was going to be an answer to my last question here. What, yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.